Hi, this is Piyush Bhargava, and I have an interesting case to share with you. So we have here on the slide multiple images from a FDG PET CT scan in a patient um, who presented with lymphadenopathy. Let's look at the rotating image on the left. This rotating image shows extensive hypermetabolic lymphadenopathy involving the lower neck and extending into the chest involving contiguous lymph node groups. This finding is also seen here uh, on the middle group of images, the fused PET-CT images showing left supraclavicular lymphadenopathy extending into the chest and into the anterior mediastinum. This finding is consistent with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, as you know, this CT that is done as a part of the whole body uh, PET-CT uh, can be either a low dose CT without IV or oral contrast or uh, frequently IV and oral contrast are also used and in this patient we did give them IV contrast and one of the slices in the neck we see this internal jugular vein here on the left and look at the vein on the right although not very clearly seen there's a filling defect inside the left internal jugular vein which is better seen on the coronal image right here on the bottom right where we see the vein and a filling defect inside it. And this finding is consistent with a venous thrombus, uh, and the contrast is outlining the thrombus. And this thrombosis is secondary to compressive effect of hypermetabolic lymphadenopathy in the left supraclavicular region. So this patient has Hodgkin's lymphoma, and they also have deep venous thrombosis secondary to that seen on the contrast enhanced CT acquired as a part of PET CT. Um, also, it's important to note that no other lymph node groups are involved either in the neck, chest, abdomen, or pelvis. There is no involvement of uh, bone marrow, and also there is no involvement of uh, visceral organs. Here is an interesting article that I found related to the case, venous thromboembolism in patients with acute leukemia, lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. Uh, here, the authors are saying uh, that Studies have demonstrated that the risk of venous thromboembolism associated with hematological malignancies such as leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma is considerable. In fact, the incidence associated with these malignancies exceeds that for many solid tumors. Primary and secondary pharmacological prophylaxis can be problematic in these patients who are often thrombocytopenic. Strategies to prevent venous thromboembolism, especially upper extremity catheter-associated thrombosis, needs to be developed. Thanks for watching.